Today, we're gonna dyno our Mark 8 GTI and take it down the drag strip. When new cars come out, people obsess over horsepower and torque numbers listed by manufacturers, as well as zero to 60 times and quarter mile times shared by the media. This often leaves people wondering what the real world numbers actually look like. So today we're gonna to find out starting with a dyno. Okay, so we're here. Stock Mark 8 GTI from the factory, 241 horsepower, 273 pound foot of torque is what VW claims. I've heard that these are actually underrated, so I expect to see the wheel numbers to be somewhat similar to that. Let's see. On the first attempt of our dyno of the Mark 8 GTI, the car would not allow us to actually dyno it. So we've been having some troubles, it's giving us a fault of engine speed, uh, maximum limit exceeded or something of that nature. Uh, won't go over 3,800 RPM. So to put it in dyno mode, here's what we do. All right, hit the button, wait for everything to boot up, turn on your hazards, pump the pedal five times. As soon as these faults come up, deactivating everything, you start it up. That's, we've we've unlocked the code. This is like a uh, national treasure, but I'm, uh, I'm Nicolas Cage. Those who have the ability to take action have the responsibility to take action. If you see this boost brake booster limited is limited and this electronic parking brake fall, after they come up, everything turns off, all these lights, the ESC light, uh, because when the lights turn back off again, it's not actually in dyno mode. You know it didn't stick, take another swing at it. and 299. It's that club sport muffler. That's what it is, the club sport muffler just had a crush in the game. <laughs> Two forty nine and three hundred nineteen pound foot of torque. That was a fourth gear run. What does this mean? That means Mark 8s are gonna be fast. Faster than Mark 7s at least. All right, so interesting thing that we found when we did the dyno. So this red line here is a third gear pull. Now the blue and the green line are both fourth gear pulls. Now the reason why we did that is because if you look where they end because of the speed limiter on the car, is this is the fourth gear ones the speed limiter cuts out here that's why you normally do uh the runs in the other gears but the interesting point is actually the curves right here so if you look this has a spike on it and so does this one now if it happened one time you might think it was something that was a fluke but if you look it happened both times in fourth gear so there's something in the coating of it that actually allows the ecm to to spike and demand a lot more torque and then it freaks out and it's like wait, wait that's too much torque and so it pulls it down whereas the third gear one kind of goes up and is more rounded the way you'd normally see most things spike like that it might be an issue with the way that it's programmed that it's like it allows way too much uh torque is it an american limiter are they no, limiting us Americans? i don't think it's an america it's america <laughs> it's a they're uh they're limiting our freedom units i don't think it's actually anything ian said he thinks it might be a uh, kind of a bug in the way they've written the software that may be true okay so the red here is our third gear run 299 pound foot of torque 244 horsepower the blue is our first fourth gear run that's 319 pound foot of torque and again that peak is up here and then 249 horsepower and then the green also 316 and 252 again that peak is right here way up there this car has way more power than it was advertised it does have more power than advertised how about that so after we completed our dyno let's take a look at what it does at the drag strip okay so we're here we're gonna be running our car against ben if you don't know ben from gears of gasoline happened to be in the neighborhood with his fdrx7 just in the neighborhood just stopped by and so we're gonna run first time ever running this car in any competition capacity and it has a bunch of new parts on it first time me running the gti so the Virgin Journeys. Yeah. Here, let me show you around the RX-7 real quick. So it's a 93 Borg Warner single turbo. 
right there. Uh, still 1.3 liter rotary engine. Not the prettiest engine bay, but uh, it makes 360 wheel horsepower, roughly, supposedly. Mostly, the last thing that I did to this car was I exploded the rear diff launching it, trying to just tune around. So it's got a fresh rear diff, got a new LSD and all that stuff. So I'm just, fingers crossed, not gonna, you know, break that again. But other than that, you know, I think it should be okay. Close race? Uh, no, not a chance. <laughs> not a chance, I'm gonna lose, a lot. Are you worried about the car at all? I mean, as we've seen from our experiences thus far, we should always be at least a little worried. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I'm not I'm not super worried, but I'm also not not worried. <laughs> I gotta turn off my tracks control. Oh, okay. I don't know where it is. He forgot to read the owner's manual. Sport, sport. But what if you put it in custom? Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's been three hours. Emily's having to stay warm by doing aerobics. <laughs> there we go. Did you find it? It's in trouble it. now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I feel like Paul jumped the light. Yep. Jump the light? Yeah, he jumped it. Oh, what a rookie. So everyone in the comments is gonna be roasting Paul for not knowing how to work the car. Yep. And uh, not, not knowing, knowing how, how to drive, drive it. it. <laughs> yep. And I encourage that as much as you can, just flame on. Uh, it bogged off launch. Uh, I also red lighted, but it seemed like traction control, we had a tough get time getting it off. It's actually pretty easy once you know where to get, locate it. But supposedly it turns off all the way. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You're both slower. <laughs> so I know what you're thinking. 14.8? 14.8? Eight? And that was my best run. The media coverage around this car has showed this car to be running in the high 13s. Now I know that makes you think that I am an absolutely trash driver. In which case, you'd be right. Most importantly, those cars were DSGs for testing, which is a heck of a lot easier to do than launching a manual car. Our cameraman actually was clowning me during this testing and runs as I was attempting to improve our runs. Well, Paul's consistently done worse. All three runs. <laughs> but he almost made it to 100 miles an hour, so. Crazy. And so he took a shot at it, and his first run looked like this. All right, Nathan's gonna run. Lucius, we're in last place, relax, jeez. So I know you think that you're Ricky Bobby. Well, I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. But unless you have experience of drag racing cars and getting cars on the track, getting closer to times that the media is going to get is going to be much more difficult than you think, especially when you actually have to actually drive instead of just like push the button and just let go of the brakes. Launching a front wheel drive manual car is difficult. And since we didn't drop tire pressures or have the mods to prevent wheel hop, or have a better actual driver on hand, I wasn't capable of putting down the numbers that the media actually were able to accomplish. Now I will say, as I improved at driving, we really did about five runs on that car, the car actually became slower and slower. That 14.8 became our best time because heat soak became a major problem. So I suspect a couple things, once you upgrade the intercooler on that car, it will 
drastically improve the heat soak and you wouldn't have as much of a problem. So maybe I've been able to actually improve my times as opposed to go backwards. But things like a dog bone insert, better tires, drop in tire pressures would also be things that you would be able to improve your times without actually adding power. Now I know you're disappointed and guess what? So am I. I'm disappointed in myself. Uh, I'm disappointed in my cameraman. I'm disappointed that we're not good enough to actually produce numbers that look uh, even semi presentable. But we will be revisiting as we mod this car and as we do a bunch of stuff to improve uh, both things like launching, but also horsepower and torque and things like that. We will be doing more dyno testing and more actual drag strip testing. So stay tuned for that, but more Mark 8 videos. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.